Hey guys, what is up? It is Bibzuda7 here again, and welcome to another RuneScape 3 video here today on RuneScape's latest skill, Archaeology. In this video, I'm going to be doing a guide to all of the relics, what they do, and where you can get them. So, yeah, I hope this helps you guys out. Uh, I know this is a bit late. I was kind of uh, slacking on making this video, but I wanted to try and get almost all the relics before I made this video so I knew exactly all the nuances and maybe weird things that you might have to do to get a few of them. And I'm glad I did because there was definitely a couple things that did trip me up on my way to getting all these. And hopefully it'll help you guys out if you need you know, any additional that you might have missed. Um, but yeah. I'm going to be doing them in alphabetical order by their power name, which is how they appear by default in the Relic interface here. Uh, and for the most part, I'm just going to be talking where they are, but I will go and show a couple things as well, which uh, are things that I might have struggled on. So <clears throat> the first one is uh, the Subtle Blade, which is, or the, the power is called Abyssal Link, but the way you get this Relic is to get the Subtle Blade. And in order to get that, you are going to need the uh, the Howl's Floating Workshop mystery completed. And I'll leave a link in the description to my guides on all the things that you need uh, for the various relics in the, in the description. But you will need the Howl's Floating Workshop mystery completed. And you will have to go to the workshop and study the blueprints after completing the mystery in order to unlock the ability to make the subtle blade from there. And that requires level 112 archaeology to make this and also 111 invention. So those are the two thing, two levels that you'll need for this one. Um, and the reason you need 112 archaeology is because you're going to need a shard of the blade, which you get from somewhere where I'm going to go and show quickly. Uh, you'll need a shard of the blade. You'll need a prototype god sword. And a prototype god sword can be gotten from the excavating plots in Howl's Floating Workshop which is uh, the Ethereum Forge, and that is 112 archaeology required. That is why you need 112 for the prototype God Sword. And then you'll also need um, 500 historic components, which are <clears throat> part of the new ancient materials, and 500 base parts, which are a regular material, and then 10 time-worn and 10 vintage components. So yeah, um, that's what you'll need to make it. And to get the shard of the blade, you will have to have already gone and uh, discovered the blueprint in Howl's Floating Workshop. I'll go show where that is as well. But once you've gone and discovered the blueprint location, or like the fact that you've gone and discovered the blueprint, you come over here actually to uh, the World Wakes uh, area and I guess you do need the World Wakes quest. I don't need you. Ne I don't think you need it to be fully completed uh, but you have to have at least entered it uh, and then you just click on this en entrance it's not going to work for me because i've already oh it does <clears throat> uh, so you, you'll, you'll get the option here if you haven't gone and discovered the blueprint from the things in the workshop you won't get this option you will um you will get, get sent straight down to the Gothic Shrine. Um, but you'll click the main entrance and then you come here and this is where you get the Shard of the Blade. You just investigate the Shattered Blade and uh, you can get the Shard of it right there. And then that is one of what you need, the, the strange Shard of the Blade piece. And then <clears throat> I'll quickly go up to the workshop and show where exactly you need to go to get the actual blueprints because you do need these for a couple of relics actually so I'll just show it once and then you'll have it um, so like I said I will leave a link in the description to my guide on this mystery that you need to get up to this place but um, yeah you do need 112 already to get it and you can do the mystery quite earlier than that so I assume you'll probably have it done by the time you can make this relic but we're just gonna head over there now um, and obviously during the mystery you'll know how to get to this place um, just because it'll have it you'll have it done but you might not know 100% about the blueprints because they're actually separate from the workbench that you actually use during the mystery but this is the ethereum forge as well where you get the prototype god sword required make sure if you're uh, if you have the full archaeologist outfit you can use the fixate ability to get it guaranteed if you're trying to get it um, and these are the theoretical blueprints right here. So you click decipher and there's three things you can learn from them and you might as well just do them all. There's like no cost or any real reason to not get them all. So just decipher all three, <clears throat> one of them being 
the subtle blade. Once you get the shard of the blade and the prototype gad sword you, and all those materials, you just go to any invention workbench and create the relic, and then you go hand it in at the monolith. So that's one of the more complicated ones for sure. Uh, so yeah, the others aren't too bad compared to that. But uh, that power is called Abyssal Link, and what that does, as you might have seen, is it lets you teleport for no cost of runes, which is a pretty nice ability and will probably be something you want to use when you're doing clue scrolls and stuff. You can teleport, but they don't require runes, but they give no magic XP. 250 power required and 5,000 chronotes to harness, so a bit of an expensive one for sure. But yeah, definitely good for those clue scroll hunters. Um, the next one is the Seed of the Charyu Tree, which gives the always adds power. And that power gives you the, fe the ability to <clears throat> always burn your cut logs while woodcutting for immediate fire making XP. And this might actually be something good that you might want to use for something like acacia trees in Menaphos. But a lot of time people do crystallize those and that wouldn't give you the logs to burn. But to get this one, you do need the Seed of the Charyu Tree. And in order to get that, you need to go to the uh, the Warforge, and um, that will require you to have completed the Out of the Crucible mystery and the Into the Forge mystery in order to get the Seed of the Charyu Tree inactive. And uh, I'll show that where you get it really quick here. It is pretty easy to find, but it is inside the Forge at the Warforge. And um, you also need to have completed part of the All Fired Up minigame in order to activate it. And you'll just need to have completed enough of it to get the Flame Gloves unlocked. So within the Warforge here, you just come back to this Imkondo Anvil and click it. And you'll get the Seed of the Charyu Tree inactive. Then you just equip some Flame Gloves and then click it and you'll be able to activate it and that is the finished relic completed and then you just go back to the monolith and hand it in and you will have the relic power unlocked so yeah that is how you get that one <clears throat> a lot of these aren't going to be like that there's most of them that are just collections um which this next one is kind of like that. It is the Berserker's Fury Relic, and this is one of the best relics for PVMers, and I actually don't have it yet because of an item you need, but the Berserker's Fury Relic will allow you to deal up to 5.5% more damage the lower your current life points are below your max. So it's basically like having the Darox set effect pretty much at all times. And... Um, it's probably a little less of a potent potent uh, effect than that, but still, it's very very strong for your DPS. I think it's, people were saying it averages out around two to three percent, uh, as long as you're not camping full HP, as far as I know. Um, but to get this, you will need the Darox Memento, and in order to get that, you'll need to combine a lock of hair with an amulet of the Forsaken. And uh, the Lock of Hair is the piece of the relic that you get for completing the Ceradominist 1 collection. And that is doable quite early on. This relic is quite easy to unlock at level 56 archaeology. Um, yeah, the Ceradominist 1 collection is limit, uh, ends there with the, uh, the Studio Debris, I believe. And um, as you can see, uh, how do you... Where's the collector information here? I don't know why it doesn't show that on the right click like it does when it's equipped, but um, the Ceradominus 1 collection can be handed into. Except, oh, no, wait, that's Zamorak, sorry. Uh, it is Lao, no, Armadillo, Sriracha. There you go. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, but yeah, this can be handed in at Falador in the White Knight's Castle, and you basically need all the lower level uh, Everlight artifacts, as you can see, and you'll get, uh, you will get the piece for the, uh, the relic, the Lock of Hair. And then you'll need an Amulet of the Forsaken to combine it with. And the Amulet of the Forsaken is a very rare drop from Barrows. So if you don't have it on Iron Man, it is very, very rare. So you'll have to do a lot of Barrows to get it. But on mains, you can buy it. I think it's pretty expensive now because of this relic. I'm not sure the exact price, but the GE price says 3 mil. I think it's probably more than that. Um, it just hasn't been, it doesn't reflect the, the new price, but yeah, that's how you do that. And then you just combine the lock of hair with the, uh, with the amulet and you'll have the Darox Memento and you hand it in for the Berserker's Fury Relic. So yeah, that one's pretty simple. Uh, the next one is the Conservation of Energy Relic, which gives you the 
ability to save 10% adrenaline when you use an ultimate ability. And I thought this one was going to be quite good, but it's actually not um, one of the ones you want to use for PVM, uh, according to you know people who know more about it than I do. Uh, so yeah, conservation of energy requires the... Um, the experimental aether reactor item to hand in. And this one requires level 118 archaeology as well as level 108 invention. And this is another one of the things that you will get from deciphering those blueprints at the Halls workshop. And uh, in order to build this thing, uh, which you also need to build it at an invention workbench, you will need a Chulu stone, which is an artifact that you get from the level 118 spot in the Howl's workshop, which is the one up above uh, compared to the level 112 spot, which is down below by the workbench. And um, so you need the Chulu uh, stone, which you can repair. Then you'll need another 500 historic components and then another 10 time-worn and 10 vintage components followed by 200 quintessence, which is a material that you can get. Um, the caches for it are located in the uh, the Empyrean Citadel, if you want to get them from there. But once you have all of those items, you go to an invention workbench with level 108 invention, and you go ahead and create this item, and you bring it back here to get this relic power. So there's no weird little item that you need in addition. You just need the artifact, the quintessence, and the invention components to create this one. Um, but yeah, like I said, this one's actually not one that you want for PVM. Um, I don't know if it's actually good for anything, but I thought it was going to be one of the better ones, as well as uh, the other one that gives you 110% adrenaline. But actually, apparently, according to PVM Encyclopedia WIC uh, Discord, not none, neither of those is actually the optimal for PVM. So, yeah, surprise to me. But um, moving on now, we should be moving a little quicker at this point. I don't think there will be too many more complicated ones. Um, the next one is called Death Ward, which gives you 5% damage reduction against you when your life points are below 50% and 10% damage reduction when they're below 25%. So it's actually not too bad. Uh, this one, it only costs 150 power and it's, you know, da pretty decent amount of damage reduction when you think about it. So it is not the worst thing in the world. Um, and to get this one, you just need to give an AVNC Dream Coat to Armadil. Um, and basically an AVNC dream coat is an artifact that you can get from, uh, from the spot that is, what level is it? Level 81, I believe the AVNC dream coat spot is level 81, which is located at the Stormguard Citadel. Of course, the tailory debris, which is, um, I think it's at the main area. Once you walk across the, uh, the gaps, it's, I think to the North. What's the way, which way is that? Oh no, south, southeast from the main spot. Yeah, uh, and that is what you do. you just get the AVNC Dream Coat. You restore it, and then you bring it to Armadil, who is atop the tower um, near Port Phasmates. Unless you apparently there's some uh, something that you could have where he's not there if you're doing Sliske's Endgame or something. So if you're in the middle of Sliske's Endgame or whatever, uh, then you might have to look it up on the wiki to find out where armadillo is but if not he should be at the top of the tower and when you give him the dream coat he will give you a ring of solomon and then you just come and hand that in and you'll get this relic unlocked so that one's pretty simple um next one is Koshe's egg or that's the item you need but this one is called deathless and this one is when die when dungeoneering you will never receive a penalty for dying not that useful, to be honest. You don't really tend to be dying all that much, but this one requires level 91 archaeology to unlock, and you just need to bring Koshe, who is the guy who lives under the uh, helmet shop, I believe, in the Fremenic uh, area of Relica, and you just need to bring him the needle that you will get as a reward from the Wise Am the Music Man collection. So that is, I'm going to put this in my pocket so I can actually just right click collector information. That is one of the wise old man's collections, as you can see here. And as I said, to complete this one, it does require um, level <clears throat> level 91 archaeology to get this one. And uh, you just need to hand this in pretty much. He's got a couple things from the Everlight and then a couple things from the Stormguard Citadel. And you just hand that in. You'll get Koshe's Needle and you bring that to Koshe the Deathless under the helmet shop in Relica, and he'll give you the egg 
uh, Koshche's death egg, and then you bring it here and you hand it in, and you'll have that relic unlocked. So that one's pretty easy as well. Just get the collection done and and bring it over to Koshche, and you get this relic, which again, not that useful really in my opinion. But, you know, if you want, you can use it. Next up is one that I'm sure a lot of people would want to have, especially Iron Man, and that is Divine Conversion. This relic is extremely good for getting Divine en divine Charge and Divine Energy. And basically it does the, the, the Guthic's Cash ability every time you go to the Rift. It lets you convert all of your memories in your entire backpack all at once. And it is extremely nice to have when you're doing Divination. To get this... You will need level 98 archaeology, and the item you need is Cress Framework. Now, to get the Cress Framework, it is actually a little bit complicated, but it's not too bad. Um, you're going to first need a Golem Framework. And to get the Golem Framework, this is another one of the things that you discover at the Blueprints. This is the third thing that you get at those Blueprints in Howl's Workshop. So you go there, you discover that, and then you get a Golem Heart and Golem Instruction. And those are two artifacts that you can get um, from the, uh, the destroyed Golem uh, debris, which is in the southwest island of the the Stormguard Citadel, and those require level 98 archaeology. You get one of each of those things, and then you'll also need uh, 150 historic components, 150 tensile parts, five classic components, and five enhancing components, and then you take the two artifacts and all those components to an invention workbench with level 86 invention, and you create the golem framework. Once you have the golem framework, you need to wait for a Guthixian cache to be open, and you will need 85 divination also for this. You'll need to wait for a Guthixian cache to be open. They open at any divination rift once an hour on the hour. And you'll need to enter the Gothic Scene Cache with your Golem Framework and then go and pick up a large memory, which are the large uh, blue ones, not the ancient ones, which are purple, the biggest ones that are still blue. And once you have it in your hands, you click on the Golem Framework in your inventory to transfer the personality of the large memory into the framework. And that will create a Cress Framework, which you can then hand in for this relic. So a bit of a complicated process. Just create the artifacts uh, and then use them to make the framework and then use the large memory within Gothic Scene Caches to finalize the relic. Uh, and then you will have this very, very useful power. So yeah, that's how you get that one. One little more rundown, 98 archeology. span Like I was saying, you also need 85 divination. And for the framework itself, you need an 86 invention. The next uh, one here is the Endurance Relic, which is probably one of the most useless ones, in my opinion, considering how many other ways there are to get infinite run energy without wasting 100 Relic power and 2,000 Chronotes. But this one makes it so you will have infinite run energy. And to get it, you'll need level 81 Archaeology, and you'll need to get the Uglog Wellspring um, Relic thing. I don't really know what you call those, I those items, but they are... The relic items and to get that all you need to do is complete the smoky fings collection at uh, the uglog lady i think her name is tess let me pull up the collector information um and yeah chief tess in uglog wants the smoky fings collection which requires a couple items from the infernal source and then some items from the everlight and then an item from the uh, the Caradet dig site, and again, that does require those. The highest level is the Pontifex sensor, which does require level 81 archaeology. And you hand it in, you'll get the item, and then you can bring it back here for the relic power. So very simple one, just complete that collection. Uh, next up is the Font of Life, and this one you actually get during the tutorial. So yeah, there's no real need to give a guide on that. Um, you get that one during the archaeology tutorial. So just do the tutorial and you'll get the relic. Next up is the Fury of the Small Relic, which gives you 1% more adrenaline for all of your basic abilities. And this is actually another one of the ones that you want to use while you, uh, like it's one of the best ones for PVMing as well. Uh, and to get this one, you'll need level 97 archaeology and you'll need to get the Goblin War Paints. And uh, these are a little bit 
this one's also a little bit complicated, but probably one of the last ones that I can remember that is. But basically, you, first, you need to get a red hand cave painting and a green skull cave painting to combine to get the war paints. And um, where you get those is, of course, at the War Forge. You'll need to have completed the uh, Out of the Crucible mystery and at least partially completed the Into the Forge mystery by getting a couple of the keys at first. Um, but pretty much you'll need to go down into the area past the crucible and you will need a Thorobashun battle standard which is restored and that is one of the items you can get or one of the artifacts you can get from the Warforge as well as a Garagorshun anchor. You need one of each of those and then you want to head down into the Warforge area and you'll need to go through the tunnels once again that you already went through to get the keys for the forge. Uh, one to the south and one to the north and the, you will get one of each of these paintings and you can make the relic with the two of them. So let me head on down here. The Gara Gershun anchor can be gotten uh, at the goblin trainee remains which I think are de uh, up to the north not actually down here but they are level 97 archaeology and um, you'll be able to use the Gara Gershun one to come down to, or I'm not sure which one is which, I think this one is actually the one that you need the anchor for. So yeah, yeah, this one is. Um, so you come down here with the anchor restored in your inventory and you enter the tunnel entrance and you'll come back out with a piece of the relic. And then you head up to the north side and you will get, uh, you wanna bring the Thorib, Thoribshun battle standard. Sorry, I'm not super well versed in these goblin names but you bring the battle standard up to the north side tunnel and you'll get the red hand cave painting as we are heading there now large place so the warforge is quite big with a decent amount of stuff that's not used or an area that's not used um and yeah right here is where you get the um the anchor and you get the battle standard actually back down the south there by the uh, by the vulcanized rubber caches. But then you just enter this tunnel again here with the battle standard and you will get the other piece of the relic. And then you simply combine those two and you can bring it back and unlock the Fury of the Small uh, relic power. So very strong one there. You definitely want to get that as soon as you can. Um, Next up is, as we get over to the spot here, is the Heightened Senses Relic. This one is one of the ones I was talking about that I thought would be good as well, but it's actually not apparently. This one increases your maximum adrenaline by 10% and requires level 105 archaeology to unlock. Pretty much you just need to get the, um, you need to complete the Everlight Mystery in order to get this one. And I will leave a link in the description to that. And at the end of the mystery, you will get yourself a cup of nectar. And pretty much you just bring that back here and hand it in. Uh, so it, it's pretty much gotten as a part of completing the mystery. There's nothing extra you have to do afterwards to get it. And you'll be able to get the heightened senses relic power. So that one's pretty simple. Next one is Inspire Awe, which gives you 2% more XP when training combat skills. And this is the highest level one at level 119 archaeology required. And to get this, you need to combine the Helm of Terror inside with the Helm of Terror outside to get the full Helm of Terror. And um, that is, th those are two items that are gotten from two different collections, as you'll see uh, here. Although it doesn't actually say you get them, because if you get them once, you only get them the one time. But you need to complete the Red Rum Relics 3 collection, which requires all of the Kali Kra items from the level 115 spot at the War Forge, and also the Boss Man sculpture from the level 119 spot at the War Forge there. And that gives you the Helm of Terror inside. And then the Helm of Terror outside is from the Green Gobbo Goodies uh, 3 collection, which has quite a bit more items, but also includes the Boss Man sculpture so and the cooking pot from the level 119 spot. So once you've completed both of those collections, combine the two items together to get the Helm of Terror, hand it in, and you will unlock the uh, Inspire Awe Relic Power. 
Next up is the Petasos, uh, or I keep getting these confused as to their power and their relic name, but um, the power is called Inspire Effort. This one gives you 2% more XP when training gathering skills. And this one, you need the item Petasos, which all you get, all you need to do for that is complete the Ceradominus 4 collection at Sriracha. As you can see, all the highest level Everlight items up to the Lance and the Spear. Get all those, hand them into Sir Acha, and you will get the Petasos item. Hand that in for the relic. Level 117 archaeology required for that one. Um, next up, you have Inspire Genius, and this one gives you 2% more XP when training artisan skills. This one requires level 118 archaeology and the Armadil 3 collection. Just complete the Armadil 3 collection, hand it in to Laos, and you will have... Uh, you will receive Howl's Thinking Cap as the item. Hand that in and you will get this Relic Power. And this one requires a ton of items all the way up to the three highest level from the level 118 spot at the Howl's Workshop. So that is how you get that one. And then the, uh, the next one is Inspire Love, which is the last 2% XP boost one for support skills requiring level 116 archaeology. And you just must complete the Zamorak 4 collection, which is given to Isaura, and you just need the highest level Infernal Source uh, relics up to the two, three to Tsutsaroth items, and you will be able to get the Ari Ari Ariadne's Diadem, and you'll hand that in to get the Inspire Love uh, relic. The next one, and I'm going to do all these in a group, are the, I'm going to do the three ones that you can get from the Hands of Glory. So, you have the Ring of Luck uh, Relic Power, which requires level 24 archaeology only. And you combine a Hand of Glory with the Ring of Luck ring uh, and then hand it in. And I'll leave a link in the description on my guide to where all four Hands of Glory are. You basically can get them all around in the various dig sites, but the lowest level one available is level 24, so you can make the Ring of Luck one with that. And you have to make these in order. So you have to do the Ring of Luck one first, and then you can do the Ring of Fo Ring of Wealth one, which is a uh, minimum of level 51 archaeology required for the second Hand of Glory. And then you can do the Ring of Fortune one after you've done the Ring of Wealth. And the Ring of Fortune one is level 58 archaeology minimum required for the next Hand of Glory. And the final one is Luck of the Dwarves that you can do after you've done the other three. And that requires level 83 archaeology. And you basically just add the ring onto the Hands of Glory and hand them in straight away into here to get those relic powers. So yeah, pretty simple. Link in the description for those. Um, next one up here is the Nexus mod, uh, which is a pretty useful one for runecrafting at the Abyss. Basically, whenever you teleport to the Abyss, you'll arrive straight at the center, which is a very nice thing to have. And to get this one, you'll need to combine a Chaos Star with a Chaotic Gatestone. And to get the Chaos Star, which it's just an artifact, um, you'll need level 68 archaeology, and it can be gotten at the Infernal Source. Uh, it's pretty... Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty important one because you need it for a couple mysteries as well. But um, yeah, the Chaos Star, you'll need that. And then you just need the Chaotic Gatestone to combine it with. And you actually get that from the Dungeoneering Reward Shop for 50,000 Dungeoneering Tokens. So you can go down to Daemonheim and grab that. For 50k Dungeon Tokens, combine it with the Chaos Star, you'll get the Abyssal Gatestone. And then you just hand that in for that Relic Power Unlock. Pretty simple one. Um, the next one here is the Persistent Rage uh, Relic, which uh, makes it so that your adrenaline does not drain outside of combat at all. And to get this, you'll need level 98 Archaeology, and you'll need to get the Rings of Rezule. Um, you'll also ha need to have completed the Dagon Bai Mystery, which I'll leave in the description as well. Uh, and you basically just need to give two Hellfire Katars to Dagon, who is down below the Infernal Source at the spot where you do the Dagon by Mystery. And the Hellfire Katars are gotten at the Infernal Source itself. They are level 98 archaeology required and can be gotten from the Byzroth remains at that dig site. So just go get those, repair them, and give them to Dagon, and he will give you the Rings of Razule, and you can hand that in for this Relic Power. Next up here is the Farm Ecology uh, Relic, and that will allow your herb and mushroom patches to never become diseased, which is a pretty useful one. And this requires level 81 archaeology. 
And all you need to do is give King Oberon's Moonshroom Spores to the Fairy Queen. And to get the King Oberon's Moonshroom Spores, you just need to have completed the um, Armadillion 1 collection. I always misclick on that. But um, yeah, just the Armadillion 1 collection, which is obviously a bunch of stuff from the uh, the dig site Stormguard Citadel. And again, this requires level 81 archaeology at the minimum to get. And you do need to hand it in to the Fairy Queen. But you will have to have already completed Fairy Tale Part 3, Battle at Orcs Rift. So yeah, that is uh, you will have to have that quest done as well before you can hand them in. But you just go hand them in. She will give you Queen Mab's Moonstone. And then you bring that back for the Relic Power Unlock. And uh, yeah, that one, not too bad. Uh, to get but a little bit annoying they have to have the quest done next up here we have the threads uh, of fate relic item which gives you the pouch protector I'm trying to find where i was here the pouch protector relic which is another one that's specific to runecrafting which is kind of interesting but uh when runecrafting your pouches will never degrade and that also includes the massive pouch from runespan so this can be very useful for you to have and um, this one only requires level 36 archaeology, which is quite low, quite easy to get this one. And you just need to combine the abyssal thread with a um, with a giant pouch. So yeah, that is it's a bit annoying that you have to do that, but you do have to sacrifice your giant pouch for this uh, relic, and then you'll have to go obviously get it back. And you get the abyssal thread itself from completing the Zamorakian 1 collection to uh, to Isaura here, obviously requiring a bunch of stuff from the Infernal Source, and that again is level 36 archaeology at the minimum to get that. Uh, combine it with a giant pouch, get the threads of fate, and bring them back here to unlock that relic power. The next ones uh, are here. Here are the, the luck rings again. We already went over those, so yeah, we'll skip them this time. Next up is Slayer Introspection, which can be quite a nice one for you people who do a lot of Slayer. It allows you to select the minimum and maximum assignment amounts when you are receiving a Slayer task. So if you get a task you really like, you can choose the maximum. If you get one that you don't like too much but either still want to do or you know don't want to waste points skipping because it's quick, you can select the minimum amount. So quite useful. And uh, all you need for that is Amaskit's Enchanted Gem. And this is also... Uh, tied for the highest level required with level 119 required for this and uh, to get the enchanted gem you just need to complete the knowledge is power collection with the wise old man once again and that one requires of course the boss man which is the thing that elevates the requirement but a bunch of random items from all the dig sites and uh, you'll need all of those hand them into Wise old man, and you'll receive Amaskit's Enchanted Gem. Give that into the Relic uh, Monolith, and you'll have that unlocked. Two more to go here. Next up is Sticky Fingers, which is actually pretty useful for uh, Iron Man, at least for me it was, because I used it while I was pickpocketing the Master Farmer for some seeds for my Jadinkos on my ranch. But basically it makes everything you pickpocket similar to Prif Elves, where you continually pickpocket again until you get caught. So quite useful, again, if you're going to be pickpocketing anything that's not Prif Elves. And this one requires level 84 archaeology, and you just need to go to the Varric, Pal uh, yeah, Varric Palace Library and give Reldo a Dominarian device. And the Dominarian device is an artifact that can be gotten at the, uh, the Everlight, and it is... Again, requiring level one or level 84, sorry, archaeology for that, and you get it from the Orcos Fishing Hut remains there, and you can get that, restore it, bring it to Reldo at the Varric Palace Library, and he'll give you Andveranot, which is the item you need to hand in to get the relic power. Last thing here is the unexpected diplomacy relic. Again, one of the very very useful useless ones. Again. Um, although I'm interested if you have this active, does it count as an increase of 10% of the reputation when you are handing in anima crystals at the heart? I'm not sure, but I'd be interested to know. Um, and this one only requires level 25 archaeology, and you just need to complete the Zerosian 1 collection to, to get this one. So very easy to get this one, uh, which makes sense because it is quite useless. And um, you just need to hand in the Zerosian 1 collection, you get all these lowest level artifacts from Karadet, 
and uh, you'll get the seal of the Prefectus Praetorio, and you hand that in for the Relic Power. So yeah, that is all the Relic Powers in the game, you guys, and where you can get them. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, if you're having trouble getting any of these things. I hope I went over them well enough. Um, I, I, I'm glad I did go through and get them all unlocked before making this video, aside from the ones that I, I don't want to use my Luck of the Dwarves on the that Relic right now, and I just couldn't get the Amulet of the Forsaken quite yet. But um yeah, it definitely helped me realize, you know, exactly what you need to do to get them as the wiki can be a little bit unclear at times. And I hope it helped you guys out. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Uh, and we will be having our hardcore Iron Man progress out later today. Should be at night at some point. And um, you guys can look forward to that. Sorry this video took so long, but I did want to make sure I had all the relics first before doing it. See you guys in the next video and peace out.